hello I'm back with another little video I hope everybody's doing okay or halfway okay today my video is going to be on a Kenwood model KA 3700 integrated amplifier now when I got this amplifier I don't know or rather I didn't know what was wrong with it and I still don't know completely it was supposedly it just had some kind of a defect I had previously opened this up before and looked at it just for a few minutes and put the cover back on because I didn't have the service manual at the time and I didn't really have time to work on it. And the only thing I did notice that when I applied a sine wave to the aux input and I hooked up the dummy load to the speaker outputs and of course I had to scope across that, I noticed one of the sine waves was twice as high as the other one. But just working the input selector back and forth, just doing that without spraying anything, made that problem basically go away. Now today I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look. Again, as I said, I only looked at it for a couple minutes and now I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it. This model here looks like it came out of the 70s. It's really a, a nice little good looking unit seems like not too complicated to work on and we can at the most maybe a few hundred parts so we'll take a little closer look now right from the beginning I noticed something was up with the fuses if you look at here at the main amp output fuses here we can see that um, the fuses are actually different types so that's definitely wrong so that means somebody replaced these for a certain reason and if we look over to the left here we can see some really ugly looking soldering that somebody did I'm pointing the little chopstick at it right now and it looks really ugly so what I'm going to have to do is um, replace that it looks like somebody took off the wire wrap or got rid of the wire wrap a wire down there so I don't have a wire wrap tool so I'm gonna to have to figure out a different way either I'll run um, take the pin out and run a wire direct probably like that or I could leave the pin in and just uh, do a little bit better job than the person before me did and solder this onto here um, correctly that'll hold too now I also notice that this resistor here, this blue resistor, it definitely doesn't look um, original. For one thing, it's the color. Number two, it's kind of like lopsided leak soldered in. And that's, I think it's, um, if I look at the one from the other channel, it's probably a carbon, carbon resistor and should have a brownish color like this. And I think these green ones here, they look like... Um, flame proof resistors seems like which nowadays are pretty hard to get so for whatever reason somebody had changed that too and in fact there's a couple different spots in the amplifier where somebody just arbitrarily cut the wire and put it back together again so I don't really know what's up with that but somebody has been in there and when somebody has been in there you always have to be careful now I'm going to go ahead and check for DC voltage across the speaker terminals and I'll do one channel at a time. I'll just show one channel here for demonstration purposes. The unit has now warmed up for a few minutes and I'm getting around 20 millivolts DC so that's okay. I can go ahead and live with that. Now I will try to clean all of the controls. What you're looking at right here is the balance control. I'll go ahead and clean the volume control and any switches I can get to. Anything that's open, I'll go ahead and try to spray that with the contact cleaner. Right now I have my scope probes hooked up across the speaker terminals. And you can't see this, but on the other side, there's uh, speaker wires hooked up, and it's going to, they're going to a dummy load, an 8 ohm dummy load. I am also using a function generator. I'm going to be 
feed in the sine wave into the left and right aux inputs. And I'm going to take a quick look at the scope, see if everything is okay. I have a variable isolation transformer, so I can slowly bring the voltage up. If not, I would be using my old dim bulb tester. So an AC voltmeter is now hooked up across the speaker terminals of one channel. And I'm going to go ahead and run it up to full power. I think 12.7 volts RMS into 8 ohms um, will give me 20 watts per channel. So I'm going to go ahead and bring things up there. We can take a quick look at the um, scope waveform. And here's the scope waveform. Seems to be well, okay. So I'll go ahead and turn things back down. Right now I'm feeding in a square wave of 2000 hertz, which would cover up to 20,000 hertz and one channel doesn't really look that good. Let me go ahead and manipulate the controls again here. Right now I'm doing the bass and treble. Let me hit the loudness. Oh, okay, I see. Notice I'm hitting the loudness button. And looks like whenever I'm doing that, um, now the looks a lot better now. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and uh, either work it more or I'll try to spray something down in there. Let me go ahead and take care of that. Now I actually sprayed the loudness switch again and I worked it back and forth a bunch of times and we can see that the square wave is looking well a lot more square which is as it should be. Now if we look at the top trace here I'm feeding in a 200 hertz square wave and we can see the top wave is not looking that great so I'm going to see if I can't do something about that. I'm going to go ahead and swap some capacitors because it looks like there's not that many on there on the circuit board in the first place. Now I have the unit standing up now. I decided to take off the front cover and the plate behind that in order to get to the main amplifier board and now I've got it flipped over now basically it's upside down and I'm gonna go ahead and slowly replace the electrolytic capacitors there's really not too many of them I think there were like 16 or 18 I have them all on hand except for the two large power supply capacitors there and also I think I can get to the controls easier now and spray into the holes on the side there took a minute but uh, well it actually wasn't that hard to do it just takes a little time so I'm gonna go ahead and change all the capacitors or rather all the electrolytic capacitors and believe it or not sometimes when I change out components on circuit boards I do use like a flashlight like this thing here and you can shine it and then you can see exactly from the other side where you're at you can come from the solder side or you can come from the component side and it makes things just a lot easier for me. I'm probably one of the few people that do it like that. Sometimes I don't know if I have a board out where exactly is the, the component at and I'll just use a powerful little uh, narrow beam flashlight like this which helps me.
Now here, just as a demonstration, you can see me shining from the component side. Again, it's a big help for me, but I'm probably one of the few weird people that do it like this. I don't always do it like that. Sometimes it's easy, easy to see where the components are at, but other times not. So meanwhile, I've changed all of the electrolytic capacitors on the main amp board. And what you're looking at now is a square wave, a 2000 hertz square wave, which supposedly covers from basically 2000 hertz to 20,000 hertz and downwards all the way down to 200 hertz. I always take, say if I'm feeding in a 2000 hertz square wave, I always take times 10 upwards and then divide it by 10 downwards and that's that basically the span it covers so it does look the square wave I think does look a little bit better we can go ahead to the 200 um, hertz square wave which should cover from 20 hertz to 2000 hertz okay let me go ahead and do that and well does look a little bit better than beforehand um anything else i want to add well go ahead and we'll take a quick look at the um, front of the machine or rather we'll take a quick look at the uh, front of the uh, amplifier Now I really can't show the front of the amplifier since um, my workbench is so small. But what I wanted to say in order for me to take the capacitors out, I had to remove this main board right here. Let me go ahead and shut the unit off. I had to remove the main amp board and the easiest for me was I noticed I had to take the all the front knobs off, take the front panel the sub panel behind that off and then I was able to take the whole board and flip it over. Now this unit has been worked on before and I did notice that the person that worked on the unit before me they did change some capacitors but just a few of them I went ahead and I swapped all of those out and they needlessly cut some wires in order to do the swap of the um, components and then they sloppily soldered everything together. Anything else I can say right now, the unit also had a lot of bad or rather horrible looking solder joints. I got those all cleaned up and it seems to me like the output transistors are not originals although they do seem to work okay so there's really nothing basically to add this was a rather routine job you always have to look um, at the units and see if somebody has been working on it before and see exactly what they did now this unit didn't have a bias adjust and it's really nothing was really getting hot or so so I decided just to let everything uh, as it was and the next thing I'm going to do is do the phono board which is over to the right I'm going to go ahead and change all of the capacitors I'm tapping this section now tap um, I mean I'm going to go ahead and change all the electrolytic uh, capacitors and take that board out and do the same thing then I'll probably go ahead and do a uh, response test I can I'll probably I might make a video for that well I think that's about all for this video thanks for your patience and thanks for watching